What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I am your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Shows. Brian. Saslov is the name you probably, if you're on the chopping block, that is the guy that you don't want to hear from. He's talking about there's a bit of frustration. I'm pretty sure he's looking at when a new guy like this comes in and he sees everything, right? He's going to look at, yo, we signed this dude for this amount of money. And what has he given us since we signed that deal? JJ Abrams, Brian. We thought he would be the savior for Superman. Um, David Saslov has prioritized this character. He says, we need to do something about Superman. Superman is the, 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 the number one. He is the classic. He is, he's the number one guy, not Batman. Some of these other characters, Superman. Well, he said publicly Superman and Batman are two of the three biggest IPs in the world so you can debate him on that but it is illustrative of how he thinks yes that's what he thinks he has in his library two yes. of the three biggest and as we know the matt reeves batverse is off to a great start so one of them is in excellent shape the other is not yeah so it tells you where his focus is going to be what do you think um, J.J. Abrams was thinking? Uh, is he scrambling? Uh, what, 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 is he black? Is he white? What's going on? So the, the story that's come out as, as basically there's a story a week right now, literally, of David Zaslav. Now that the deal has closed, he is in, he is in, the, in the building. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going room to room. And he's basically <laughs> being like, what are we doing here? Yeah, and they, yeah. they, it's all, I have this image of like, these people have five minutes to like convince him of what they're working on. And if he doesn't like what he hears, he just is like, cut, 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 <laughs> cut. Because, you know, publicly, this deal has to deliver a lot of cash flow and a lot of cost saves. And he has said publicly, like, this is a 40 billion revenue company, which is not cash flow positive, and it needs to be cash flow positive. So that means things are going to get cut. That's the simple translation. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we've already seen the Wonder Twins toast. We've already seen you know certain changes to streaming versus theatrical. Movies are going to be theatrical. It seems like really not really going to HBO. They will go to HBO Max after they've been in theaters. Shows will be HBO Max. So he's redrawing those lines. The J.J. Abram things came up because he was handed a $250 million contract in 2019 to be sort of the czar of a lot of things DC. So he kind of had Superman and he had Green Lantern and he had these other things. And we just haven't seen a lot of output, right? There's, I guess, Batman Cape Crusader, which is sort of him with Bruce Tim. That's coming next year. That's locked and loaded. We're super excited for that. But... Bruce Tim's the guy who helped develop, right? This is not JJ Abrams didn't create Batman the animated series. That's that's yeah, IP yeah. that was there before he got there. Yeah. So the quote that got leaked, which was pretty nasty, <laughs> was basically like, this guy went through the building and laid claim to all these characters and then didn't do anything with them. I feel like a quote like that does not reach the media unless David Zaslav was okay with it, yeah. which means he is looking to extract himself from the J.J. Abrams business. Yeah. At W. That's what that, a quote like that, that's what that says. We want out from under this as fast as possible. Yeah. So, I mean, go down the lineup. So that ta Coates Superman story, Done so. That's not looking so likely right now <laughs> with a quote like that. You know, we talked about, you know, Greg Berlanti's been doing stuff with the Green Lantern series, but J.J. Amos was supposed to do something with maybe with a Green Lantern movie. That's probably not happening. 
And then who knows, it sounded like he might've had his hooks into other things that maybe never reached the light of day in terms of what we know yet. I mean, sounds like this is gonna, sounds like J.J. Abrams at Warner Brothers DC is gonna be, gonna get as far as J.J. Abrams' Superman flyby did in the mid, in the mid nineties. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? The notion that like J.J. Abrams basically might be out of WB to take a, to take a loss, take a charge, pay him his money and send him on his way and start over. I think that would be the way to go, man. I swear, I think I would do the same. After signing $250 million contract and you in charge of all of this and all we're getting is an animated show, which I'm grateful for to get this animated series from Batman, the Cape Crusader, but uh, there's a lot more that can be done and it hasn't gotten done. What are we doing here? And based on the track record, listen, you were, you were given, I guess, uh, 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 an IP with Star Wars and that didn't do well, right? Um, Star Trek started off well. Did he do the second one with Khan? Did the second one, yep. And there's a that pattern. Wasn't, Go ahead, yeah, there's a pattern. Yeah, yeah. so you know, it's do if, if you if you tell if you're asking me what would I do in this situation based on the, all those things that we've just laid out. I would I would start anew. So I think that's what's gonna. Ha that's what I think that's what's happening. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the, the pattern of JJ Abrams, super innovative guy, super creative guy, but like he usually starts out a lot better than he finishes. If you look at Alias, Lost, Star Trek, Star Wars, it all kind of fits the pattern, right? Yeah. That first Star Trek, Force Awakens, they're a lot better than Star Trek Into Darkness and Rise of Skywalker, like. And his biggest successes as a filmmaker have been with IP that he didn't invent. Yeah. You know, so I think if you really are dead set in elevating Superman back to where he was when Richard Donner, you know, brought Christopher Reeve and Gene Hackman into the universe, Danny Abrams is not the guy that I'd be calling yeah. to create that. That's not what his resume says is his gift. Yeah, and I'm not saying I have the guy. Now I've I've said on another podcast I think Joseph Kaczynski, director of Top Gun Maverick, is the guy I think should direct the film. That's not this. He's not a writer, so he he's not. You would need a second guy, or girl, or other to write the film for you. But I think they would. I think my re, if I'm putting the jigsaw puzzle of Zaslav together, I don't think you're gonna see. Superman lumped in to a contract with a creator where it's like, hey, you've got access to six, seven different things and Superman's one of them. Superman is going to be his own thing. There's going to be a, you know, a producer, writer, director that is dedicated to nothing but Superman. That's what my read of this is. And that's going to be everything else that is in the pipeline is going to be moved down a notch so that Superman can be put in the number one priority position for the next couple of years. All signs point to that. And I think by starting that way, you build that universe. Uh, and I think that is what Sasloff is intending to do you know, having seen the success of Marvel, I mean, again, I said it once um, before and many times over that, why wouldn't you want that success that Marvel's having and having the characters to do it? But I think, so it's an interesting, Zaslav said a lot of this on an earnings call, so you can find it if you just Google the script. I think there's a, some of the things I inferred from what he's talking about in terms of the, the power of the Superman IP Again, what, I don't know that you, I probably would tell you Superman is not in the top three IP of the genre right now. Yeah. But I think like, you know, if I think back to like when you and I were kids and it came time for Halloween, Superman was one of the top costumes, right? Kids wanted to be Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And nowadays, I don't think he is anymore, right? Kids want to be Iron Man. They still want to be Batman. That hasn't faded. But Superman faded, right? So I think like Captain America, Thor, I, Marvel has put themselves in a spot where Superman kind of was 30 years ago in the eyes of the younger audience in particular. And so I think that's a lot of what he's talking about is like, is, is making Superman a go-to hero and a brand in the way that he was. And I think to your point, he's, he, he, he went out of his way to praise Matt Reeves and praise the Batman on this earnings call. So he's smart enough to recognize I got something that ain't broke, so I don't need to fix Batman. Batman is just fine. Mm -hmm. But he's smart enough to recognize if I can get Superman to that level of appeal and quality, I have the foundation yeah. to go up against Marvel. Because if I have yeah. Batman and Superman in a great place, you're making money. With yeah. What you can, you, you, what, you could, if you want to do world's finest, it's still out there because you didn't of do it before. No, exactly. Or if you want to just bring them into other things or link them to other projects, if as long as people are invested in Batman and Superman, like you are going to make a lot of money with your DC universe. Yeah. Let's see what happens, man. I I'm think, excited. I'm yeah, excited. This is as excited as I've been about the future of DC that, that oh, yeah. 10 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think DC is in the right hands now with someone who is seeing the DCIP as what it is. And, and, and that is an opportunity that hasn't been really taken advantage of at all by the WB. It's been an afterthought, in my opinion, for them. And it's just uh, a vehicle for them. Yeah. I mean, with Marvel, you want to make money, but at the same time, you have people behind those characters that want to do justice for those characters. And WB doesn't seem or hasn't been interested in that. And I think now we have someone who is interested and in not himself interested, but is interested in putting somebody in charge that has that same feeling that a Kevin Feige has towards MCU. I think there's going to be, you know, there's a real opportunity and real pressure too, because if, you know, if we just look at the the state of the world of DC right now, because we, you know, the Batman, we're fresh off the high of that and a uh, fantastic job there. But as we've discussed previously, the Flash franchise, you know, David Zaslav comes in, that is in disarray because of the Ezra Miller situation. We don't know where that's headed. You know, this Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial has done no favors to Aquaman 2. Uh, I, I really don't think that's going to be a help. I mean, it doesn't sound like she's a major part in the movie, and it does sound like this personal situation is a part of it. But, you know, that's, that's you know, if you're the new CEO of a company, you don't want to see that Walter Hamada on a witness stand talking about <laughs> casting or, or firing people out of your upcoming sequel to a billion dollar movie you don't want to see that that's not good for business yeah and you know you you layer on to that like we know kind of the the rest of the justice league is still kind of in shambles and even you know with the misstep that wonder woman 84 was you kind of have more questions now about wonder woman 3 and like where that's headed than you probably did 12 24 months ago so my point is that the things you thought were surefire are not anymore. Yeah. So there's a there's a real pressure, but there's a real opportunity for Superman to step into that void and kind of save the day, do what he does in the comics, right? And kind of be like, listen, it's all good. Like we got Batman, we got Superman. We're right at the ship and we're heading heading in the right direction. I mean, I, I think that's what the goal is gonna be. I can yeah. I can paper over a lot of problems if there's a great Superman film out there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the future of the DC uh, universe. Do you think uh, Zaslav is the guy to, to really right the ship and put it in the same, I guess, level as the MCU? Um, if you ask us, man, DC should have been just as or perhaps even more successful than uh the mcu and they just dropped the ball and finally now we have somebody that's looking at things in a more logical way and understands what needs to be done and that is the hope so let us know in the comment section below 
what you guys think of Zaslov in his direction of the DCIP. Um, that is our show. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gem Report.